Ocholi Okutepa is the co-pioneer of the relationship and marriage outreach, reaching out to all the classes of singles and married couples through the Singles and Married Hangouts, Sit Out, Monthly in Abuja, Nigeria, and the Monthly Premarital Classes for Singles and the School of Marriage for Marriage. The Hangouts events have been hosted from city to city in Nigeria and other parts of the world since 2015. The vision he has pursued with his wife Julia is to bring clarity to single people before and in the course of relationships and help establish godly homes through the teaching of biblical principles on relationships and marriage. Ocholi also believes that through prayers, the will of God is established and he continues to see diverse miracles released in his ministry as God intervenes in circumstances that require more than teaching and human action. He is the author of several books including Hobby and Wifey Checklist, Questions You Must Answer Before You Say I Do, which he co-authored with his wife. Ocholi and Julia Okutepa are ordained traveling para church ministers and directly fellowship at the Summit Bible Church Abuja under the leadership of Dr. Andy Osakwe. Ocholi is a legal practitioner by training and managing partner of Numa and Law, a firm based in Abuja. He is a notary public, holds a master's in oil and gas law from the University of Aberdeen, Scotland, UK, and is an alumnus of the Institute of Public-Private Partnerships and the International Law Institute, both in Washington, D.C., USA. He is married to Julia, his lifelong love, and together with their three children, David, Ariella, and Hamina, they make their home in Abuja, Nigeria. With Jesus joy in our hearts, RCCG, the Life Center Youth, let us receive the ministry of Pastor Ocholi. Are you hungry? Praise God now. Hallelujah. Are we quarreling? Praise God now. Hallelujah. These people here, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey. This is a hungry zone. Hungry zone. Praise the Lord. If I were to give you like $1,000 each for this volume, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Money is a bad thing. <laughs> so as if you get $5,000 each, if you really shout it, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody stood up. <laughs> Not like 20000 Assuming you are getting like $10,000 each, if the volume is really loud. Praise the Lord, though. Hallelujah. These people don't like money. <laughs> These people don't like money. All right. So, um, Caleb is here. Caleb, wave, wave, wave. My, my, my people, my people, my people that came around. Clap for Caleb. Now, what is this kind of jealousy? Where is John? I come back to your seat. Thank you. All right. Um, John, yeah, get the RNM phone and do the update on the teaching, on the groups, yeah, all the groups. Um, then John just went to pick my, my people from school. David, uh, first son, is here. My wife is home because she's engaged with some other assignment. David, stand up now. I saw him this morning. Uh -huh. That's my first son. He's 12. <laughs> sit down, sit down. Thank you. Then the middle one is at home, but Ari Amina is the last. She's eight. Amina, stand up. Oh, yeah, now. Nah. You're not shy. That's, don't behave shy. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. Am I done with it? Then uh, let's clap for Pastor that. Uh, Pastor sent me a message and said, at last. Eh? At last is inside the things I'm going to share today. But that at last, <laughs> at last. we thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, to the leadership of the church, uh, Pastor Doom, and um, all the pastors for um, inviting me to share. Praise God. All right, many of us are in a relationship. Boldly with you, you are in a relationship. It's not that kind of relationship that Pastor was teaching us. Though. I know you have a relationship with your father, your mother, eh, eh, not that one. 
How many of us are in a romantic relationship? Leading to marriage or married? With Jesus. The way I'm seeing you is Jesus only. <laughs> it's only Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. She's in relationship. He's in relationship with Jesus. How many of us are in relationship with Jesus? How many of us, uh, hands down, hands down, hands down. How many of us are male and are in a relationship with a lady that we love and intend to marry? It's not Jesus now. Wave, keep your, David, your hand must go down. My son is raising hand. How many of us? Come. Is she in this church? <laughs> okay, how many of us are ladies that have a guy in our life for the purpose of marriage? Thank you. How many of us are ladies, there's no guy in our life, but we are suspecting somebody that is eyeing us? How many of us are ladies? Somebody is seriously asking you out, but you don't want. Hey, the rejection is a lot. Are you a girl? How many of us are guys that are toasting somebody, they are rejecting us? You are there. Because it's not your time. How many of us don't want to marry at all? We just want to be single. Be careful. Okay, stand up, stand up. You don't want to marry in this life. You want to be single. Hope you know the sisters are watching you. Tomorrow night you go and meet them. They tell you, remember that day you stood up. If you want to change your mind, sit down now. Father, open their eyes. All of you point your hands to them and say, Father, open their eyes. Show them what they are missing. Oh, yeah, sit down. Have we finished the sharing? I'm actually waiting for you to finish sharing so that we can have total calm and I'll start teaching. Have we all got... Is everybody, have you all got um, your snack, yeah? Praise God. Okay, here's the deal, eh? Um, to make it easy to teach, eh? Just eat gently, leave all the side comments. I was doing all of that to just wait for you to all get your snacks, okay? Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the privilege to share fellowship. Thank you for the opportunity this afternoon to teach your word. Anoint me to teach truth in simple and clear language that everyone can understand. Anoint my listeners to understand better than I teach and to appreciate deeper than the revelations I bring. That at the end of the day, our lives will bring forth fruit to the praise of your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so I met my wife first in university 20 years ago. Um, December, it will be 13 years we have been in marriage. We are very young people. Um, yeah, you, if you want to clap, clapping is, is good. It's not, a, it's not a bad thing. Um, 13 years by next month in marriage, um, and that's where I want to die, because uh, when people say we die here, it's actually in marriage you should have that conversation about we die here. She was a young girl, I was a young boy, and um, so when I meet groups like these, speaking to youths, and you meet some people who are quite young, you meet some people who are closer to marriage or, like I'm told, who are even married, um, I find it easy to speak to you because one of the things you need to deal with in this generation is the stupidity of culture. Say to your neighbor, the stupidity of culture. Say the stupidity of culture. You know, culture is so stupid that we don't even call it what it is. 
All right, um, I didn't even plan the scripture that is coming to mind, but I really sense in my heart to flow from there. If you've got scriptures, please put on the screen Romans chapter 12. Put it in the message translation. Have you got scripture, message translation, Romans chapter 12? I'll show you something. And I'll tell you why I'm speaking to you in those terms. Because the reason why a lot of people get it wrong in life is because they think they are young enough to make mistakes. So you see people, that's why I like when the pastor was teaching when I came in, trying to help their spouses. Because they are trying to make the person play a role only God can play. Only God can play. That's why it's so amazing. When you see people fight their spouses from fulfilling their purpose, in, I'm a lawyer. I'm a lawyer, I practice. But here's the deal. And I keep saying this, people think it's a joke. I run my own firm. A thriving one for that matter. But when I say this thing, people think it's a joke. If I've got to push one aside and mind my business, I'll be doing this rather than that. I've done plenty of things with law, so I'm not like, charge, I'm not charge and bay. I'm telling you, my consultation, if I tell you, you understand. But you see what, eh? Life is a bit deeper than that. Absolutely. I value this moment. I'm leaving, leaving this to another meeting from that to another teaching online. I would do it, man, because there's something deeper. There's something bigger. I've met people in counseling, billions, millions, who are frustrated because they don't know this. And they don't even know where their frustration is coming from. They just realize they don't know. You need to teach them. I'm a teacher and I don't hide it. I teach. If I live here today, you know somebody came and taught you. Do you get what I mean? So it's so important to be in the life of this person and see something deeper. Because people are choosing for all the wrong parameters. You know, do what makes you happy. Wow, who are you? Somebody determined you before you were born. Before I formed your mother's womb, I knew they are not daily to be a prophet to the nation. See, your view is too limited to choose your own life. And that's the error of this world. Pam, 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 you go and carry somebody. Somebody, you, Jack, you don't know. Two key things before we talk about Genesis chapter 2. There are two things that must be in place before you choose or while you choose. Number one, observation. Number two, discernment. Observation is what I can see. Discernment is what only the spirit can see. And if you choose based on observation alone, you are choosing blindly, no matter what you are seeing. Because while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. They are beyond eyes. So you see a girl. You know, that's why I love scripture. Scripture can shatter tables. So when he begins to speak to the woman in 1 Peter chapter 3, he says to her, let her adornment, not just be a braiding of the hair of wearing of gold jewelry, let it be that inward man of the spirit. I cannot see that one. Because some people's virtue that you see in church is false virtue. They're just acting like it. It's God that will bring you and begin to reveal to you. A dear sister in this city shared a story with me and it's not a joke. She was dating a guy that was a shining Christian light in his entire family. His job was that he worked remotely. But she sat one day, she just woke up from a, a short sleep and a, a, a chance flashed and she saw that there was a woman in his life. I mean, this was a courtship relationship. She called him. Who is the woman in your life? Eyes cannot see that one. Like the spirit of God was moving on the matter. She had no reason to suspect. He walks remotely. Shining light of the whole family in terms of Christian testimony. The guy broke down. Actually, there is. He was not working any remotely. The remote work was a sugar mommy. Living large, servicing a rich woman. Eyes cannot see that one. Eyes cannot see. It takes a discernment of the spirit. He began to beg. First of all, to show the state of his heart, he was, he was first of all bothered about let her not tell his family. Not a broken repentance before the Lord. Not, oh, I, I, I is terribly wrong. The question was simple. Who is the woman in your life? She didn't even know. But that chance told her something. If I want to give you bad stories, many of you that want to marry even next year, you slow down. You make it three years time. I'm telling you, or four years time. What I hear on counseling table, I tell people, if you sit on my seat, you either run mad or run to God, but you must run somewhere. You hear things. Hey, 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 my father is fighting me. My mother, even my pastor is resisting. I fell in love. I fell in love. That's why sometimes people come to me, and man of God, you won't understand. I say, I won't understand. 
But when the marriage starts happening, don't come and try to make me understand. I will also not understand. Because you tell people, he that believes according to Isaiah does not make haste. You won't understand. No problem. I'll stop trying to understand. Ah, people are just talking. I'll just be looking at them and smiling. You don't be any fantastic stories. Oh my God, if I saw so spectacular. A lot of things are spectacular nonsense. For instance, as married as I am like this, do you know there are certain times you fall into spectacular things? Now they are quiet. You know, you're just boarding a plane. Then as you're climbing the stairs, you just look up and somebody's just looking down. Your eyes just lock. My God. But you're married. Child! You have to just say, see, babe. Has somebody ever given you a, a knowing look? You know, loss can be, loss can be seen before it's touched. Uh-uh. You just see, ah uh-uh. nonsense because feelings are fickle what is feelings you bank on feelings you die cheap debt I remember I was in Aberdeen I'm not kidding I'm not ki- I-, I went to do my masters in 2013 I've been married for many years then my family were here we were traveling back and forth I was on the bus oh somebody say Oibo. hey there was this babe cheese on the bus you know our eyes just jammed Hey, Jesus. Some things they don't say hi. Harmless hi is a lie. The way the eyes looked at each other, I knew there was problem. You know, I, I used style and looked away. The next time I said, let me people see. We jam again. I said, ah. When I reached my bus stop with Ule. How many of you are here? here? Ule. Piam, piam, piam. Problem. Because some situations are just one high away, exchange of number, before you know it. You know what I'm talking about. It's deeper than that. But why am I speaking like this? The civilization in which we live wants to make you to do you when you are nobody except God. It wants to make you be happy. Do what makes you happy. Do what makes you happy. Do what makes you happy. Ah. Dominion mandate. I said something yesterday in our class, premarital class. You know when you see pictures of people, I've heard that a lot because of what God is helping us do. You just put a picture with your wife and people have couple goals, you know, power couple. I say if you go to God's intention, Every couple should be a power couple. That's why I gave them dominion mandate. It wasn't reserved for a few. Every couple should be a power couple. So I'll show you now that God wants you to take pleasure in marriage actually. But any pleasure I take that is not stabilizing me to give him pleasure is wasted pleasure. Any pleasure. And that's why when people come to me, you know, somebody once argued with me, you know, what's all these things people are saying? My parent was a Christian, married to a non-Christian, and their marriage worked. I said, what do you define as work? Longevity does not mean it worked. If a man lives to be 100 and goes to hell, it's just a wasted 100 years. But on earth, we'll talk about longevity. On earth, we'll say it's a centurion. He got, is this centenary? Yeah. You know, he got to 100. I mean, he lived long. What is long in the face of eternity? They will carry his 100, they squeeze it, put it in fire. So I, I said to the person, let me tell you why your parents' marriage failed. The guy confronted me, so I gave it back to him. Because foundation of my speech, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, do not be unequally yoked. I say you are a Receive glory, honor, and power, for thou hast created all things are for thy pleasure. They are and well. Anything that is not for his pleasure is a waste, including who you choose to marry. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? So I looked at him and said, You are proof that that marriage is total failure. So you are looking at longevity. No, we are looking at content. So I'll show you scripture. Um, um, Genesis 2. Let's read from verse um, 15. Let's see how God begins to curate this thing into a space. 
And you know, as the married people are also listening to me right now, I'm sure you are judging your marriage quietly. <laughs> it's important. <laughs> Whether all you are doing is, uh, is limited pleasure. <laughs> Focus on you, you, you. Because <laughs> some people need to stop quarreling. Yeah, yeah, quarrel. It's just selfishness. <laughs> God's purpose is not being fulfilled because of quarrel. Arrogance, pride. Do you know who I am? You are nobody. They can switch you off from heaven this night. You just drop. People start crying. It's God. It's God. It's God. It's God. How many of you negotiated for your life today? Like, you know, I, I need some bread today. Give me, uh, like, uh, uh, two cylinders of oxygen. Uh, then tomorrow you send three. You know, I, my, my nostrils are really large. I go up in a lot, you know. Uh, you know, that's where Job, when Job was running mouth, God brought him to the point and said, bia, 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 bia. When I laid the foundations of the earth, eh, I, I'm sure you were there. Job could not answer. You know, when I was measuring the dimensions, I, I'm, I'm sure you were there now. Job, you were there, you remember. Job froze. God, they talk, you, they argue. The same God that put an angel, go and read the book of Revelation, they say there's an angel standing in the midst of the sun. You did Nigeria, sun, they make you pull clothes, they sweat. An angel is standing inside sun. You know, for you to stand inside sun, that means you are, you, you are hotter than the sun. So God said, Job, yeah, yeah. But please, can you give me the measurement of the sun and the moon? Then the dimensions of the earth. Just assist me. Since you now have mouth to talk, Job, assist me. That's how some of us are behaving when it comes to the issue of choosing our destiny. We're so arrogant against God like we know something. Because your best decision is terrible. Except God helps you. The best. So, you know why I'm talking like this? The greatest education on earth is informal education. The one you didn't go to school. That's how I speak my tribe. You don't even know when you enter the kindergarten of it. You were just exposed to it. Corruption on earth is so deep that what some of us call our preference is actually corruption swallowed. A little over a hundred years ago, plump women were models. Hollywood changed it, are giving us broom. And the people are pity are Nigerians who watch Hollywood because who have not traveled. Because the Western world is dealing with obesity. So they select a few, use them to act movie, and you think every Igbo person. Let me challenge you. All those Nigerians who are marrying strange white people so that they can get people to leave Nigeria, have you seen any of them that is beautiful? Go online. All those people that are marrying strange, strange Igbo people to go to America, have you seen any that is as fine as the people you see in Nigeria? But entertainment changed our perspective. So you see a boy that God has given one beautiful, well-fleshed girl to help him fulfill destiny. He's looking for broom. He's looking for leper. Because Hollywood has told him he must be like, ah! Thought that can have some. So even brother now that does not have muscle, he's going to buy muscle and wearing it. <laughs> Just the way women are now wearing bum bum, bum bum. Am I lying? That's why I tell people, do you know for a lot of people, the kind of makeup they wear is the proof of their low self-esteem? Because they have stopped accepting who God made them. So they must quark, require eye pencil, eye shadow, eye biro, lintel, roofing, everything. I don't know why you invited me. Oh. Me, I'm just preaching the word of God. I'm sorry, if you don't invite me again, I understand. <laughs> My own is hit and run. I hit the word of God. Before I know it, I'm gone. But like I used to tell you people, when we are preaching anywhere, in case you, you see the first stone, use that door. I'll join you. <laughs> so be on yellow a lot. You know, the light is to go to yellow before I go. <laughs> your head is down. I told you to be on a lot. Your head is down. Have your head up. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? So it's so important. See, forget this culture. This culture is, is this culture is killing people. That's why you see people wear things that do not fit them. Because somebody, a, a so-called model, wore it. I just see some people dressing like, is this a human being or something? What is walking there? You know, just tie everything, you know. Calm down. Wear what fits you. 
It not fit you. It not fit you. For culture. I, I'm not done. You are making me crack joke now. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. Mm. The Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend it and to watch over it. But the Lord God warned him. Somebody say warned. See, now see, simple analysis. In Genesis chapter 1, God declares his intention for them. And they came into spiritual existence. But they were not yet manifested on the earth. In Genesis chapter 2, in his wisdom, the first thing he did was to manifest the man. Right? Caleb, please come. Let's do this illustration. Hello, my sister. Please come. Let's do this illustration. Okay? Watch this. Okay, stand over there. So here's the deal. Watch this. Stand with him. I know you raised your hand for relationships. So I'll not give you a relationship, okay? Sharp gay. Don't go catch one. Bobo now. My God. Hey! Catcha. Catcha. Somebody say catcha. 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 Watch this. And watch it carefully. Face that side. Turn and face that side. Two of you, yes. Genesis 1, 26. Let us make man an image. After all like this, let them have dominion. All over about. And everything. Boom, boom, boom. So, when God wanted to create everything he created, he took material from things. So, the herbs actually came from the soil. That's why they need the soil to survive. You know, all the aquatic life came out of the water. But here's the deal. So God reached into God because God is the raw material for their creation. And that's why they don't have material existence on the earth until he goes into the earth to take material of earth to give them material existence. So if you read Genesis 1, what happens is they were fully like God in the realm of the spirit. When we get to Genesis chapter 2, this is what he did. She is still here in the spirit, finds him a body, puts him here on the earth. This is where a lot of sisters are when they are complaining, God, nobody toasted me this year. Somebody exists. It's not just time yet. So this person is worried over a person that exists and acting like the person does not exist. That's why anxiety is the most stupid place to be as a Christian. Because anxiety is actually technical blindness. Your physical eyes can see, but your spiritual eyes are blind. That's the summary of anxiety. That's why I say in, in Matthew 6, take no thought, saying, I know the Bible talks about what you shall eat, what you wear, I add, who you will marry. Because it's sorted. He said, because your heavenly father knows. That's not my focus now, so let me continue. So here's the deal. Let's now go to Genesis 2.15. Watch this. Watch this. Ooh. Then the Lord God placed the man. Where's the woman now? She's still not yet on earth. In the garden to turn and watch it. But the Lord God warned the man. Look at this. Why is he warning him? This journey I'm taking you through is not about you. So if your choice is just about you. So I tell people, when a guy, you know, King James uses another word which I love. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden. If I let's stay there, I'll come back to NLT. Uh, to turn and to keep it. Let's see if you're quick enough. Next verse. <clears throat> Watch this. Okay. And the Lord God commanded the man. So I tell ladies, when you come into his life, ask him, what's your command? What's your command? What's driving your decisions? I don't even want to go back and start talking too much. You know, I've been using this one to hear people with that jackpot. Because if you look at verse 15, it says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden. Who put you where you are? Hey, Nigeria is collapsing. Nigeria is collapsing. Go, we did. Because God put us here. Hello? If God isn't taking you there, don't go. Because some people have gone, it's a story of regret. Because nobody God sent them. You know what I'm saying? And that's why if you meet anybody whose decisions in life are taken based on pressure, not based on the command of God. Fear them, don't marry them. One day, pressure will make them ask for your head and they will bring it. Yeah, I'm telling you. That's where the world is going to. There's so much pressure. 
People think economic crunch is just in Nigeria. It's all over the world. Everywhere they are shouting, cost of living, cost of living, cost of living. So when you come into a person's life, particularly a man, you want to see what's your command. What's making you decide what to decide? That's why some people have changed seven businesses in seven years. Because it's just up, they're just looking for anything that works. What's your command? Why are you doing what you are doing? Let's continue scripture. Caleb, don't suffer from my hand. I've told Caleb to make this jacket for me. He made this jacket by himself. He has refused to make it. God has caught you on God's altar before God's people. Caleb, take my measurement today. Yes, sir. I want my own. Okay, sir. Let me make it like you now. <laughs> but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat, you shall surely die. Here's the deal. God gave a command, number one. God gave liberty, number two. God gave boundary, number three. If I come into your life and those three things are not in existence, I'll just waste my life giving it to you. Command, liberty, boundary. God commanded him. What was in the command? Eat anything here. But! Three key things. That's not my focus of this teaching. Verse 18, watch. Watch this. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. Who said it was not good? Was it a girl that said, Pastor, Pastor, it's my year. Declare over me. Declare over me. You know why? God had taken him through his curriculum. So God turned to him and said, Oga, the hour has come. Watch this. A lot of people are dating people that God is struggling to keep single. God is trying. Stay single. Stay single. Carry your leg. Enter. So people are just quarreling, quarreling. Six months relationship, the quarrel time is five and a half months. <laughs> so in six months, they managed two weeks of re actual relationship. Because that five and a half months, four of it was actually strong malice. They are dating somebody in five months, they are blocked them six times. <laughs> Block and release, block and release. They are just children, in that sense. <laughs> oh, watch this. I'm preaching real good. You may not like it, but it's so sweet. Look at the word of God. It is not good. Because God is just exposing people here, left, right, center. Somebody just say, ha! How did God go and tell him about the blocking? You know, some people, they have gift of blocking. They don't block, 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 and they want to marry. You don't block your future husband. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, come back, come back, come back. My time is remaining seven minutes, 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. Scripture, 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 scripture. Hey, and the Lord God said, Dear Caleb, because I'm giving my son out next year in marriage, or we are collecting wife for him. He's smiling. Caleb, I, I must marry you next year. Amen. Shout amen with me now. Yeah. Look at him, fine, gifted, handsome, tall. My sis smile, sis smile, sis smile. You know, you know imagine, imagine somebody that has been following me, hearing me teach the word of God. Is it not a husband material? How many years? One thousand. Hey, my God. These people, you are my best people. You are my, you are my, you are my best people. You are my best people. <laughs> What's this? He says it's not good that the man should be alone. I will make. Don't play with that word. I will make. I will make, I will make, I will make. You just see girl because she grabbed, you just follow her. Did God make her? Is it her makeup that is making you follow her? Or God made her. I will make, I will make. If you want to see the uselessness of beauty, see a woman of bad character. I will make, I will make. I will make, especially in our generation that they are covering wig all the time. Let, when you see a natural hair, I will make. I will make. After the wedding, when they remove everything, you know you are talking about my wife, my house wigs. When they remove the team and they have their bath and they wash their face and they begin to manifest their character, I will make. <laughs> You do 
just wake up in your house as a man one day, you want to run in the night. It's your wife's wig hanging. <laughs> because it looks like one face was coming from the roof. You are just seeing hair from roof. I will make. It's not by hair. And like I jokingly say, you know why some ladies don't have sense? Because the human hair they are wearing, the person they cut it from does not have sense. <laughs> so they just carry sense hair and cover themselves. I will make. <laughs> if they start stoning me, run. I will make. There's a difference between Toyota and Honda and Kia. When you meet a woman and you are taking her, ask yourself, who made this one? Hollywood, Bollywood, Z World, Big Brother Africa, who made this one? I will make. Who made this one? What did he say? South Korea. Aha. Oh, there's another one now. Korean series. You are a suspect. For you to know it, you are watching it. Somebody say, I will make. Turn to any sister near you who is making you. Say, sister. What is making you? Say, sister. Who is making you? Let's read scripture. Let's read scripture. Let's read scripture. I will make. Hey. It's a big deal. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Watch what happens next. Oh, this one always gets my attention. Watch verse 19. Don't you think after God say, ah, time has come. The next thing you see will be woman. Watch and see what he seeks. Verse 19. Oh. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast. When God speaks to you, the next thing you see is trials. This is why some people are dating beasts. Because they went to church and God told them, your time has come. The next day they went to office, they saw beasts, but they didn't have discernment. So because they believe my time has come, means I'm meeting her tomorrow. The next available beast, wild animal. And every bird of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what you name, call them. Some people are dating what they should just name and move. Idiot. <laughs> Goat. Monkey. Donkey. Katu. Tortoise. That's why some of you, your heartbreak was by a monkey. You know it. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was his name. Next verse. Next verse, next verse, next verse. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. In essence, Adam did not settle. You know why people are settling today? When you look at all the options and the one is not there, you begin to look for the best among the options. Adam said, you know what? Even though I'm living here without a partner that you told me about, I'd rather stay single until I see the picture that you gave me. And all the animals I just named, none looks like the picture. So sometimes a girl will come to me, sir, uh, there are two guys interested in me. Uh, this one is really religious. He's even in my department in church, but he's broke. You know? But there's this guy in my workplace, hmm, man of God. This guy doesn't really, you know, he's not, he's, his first name is Luke. His last name is Warm, so he's like lukewarm. You know, he's not really serious with God. But this guy has money, man of God. This guy has money. This is the question I ask them most of the time. Who say he must be one of them? Of all the billions of people on earth, you brought two, and you want me to help you make sure I choose one. I say, who said it must be any of them? Adam was done. Don't forget, see, we have even forgotten Eve. Eve is still stranded in the spirit. She's getting tired of us. I deliberately did not give her a chair. This is where a lot of sisters are. You know, some of you, you're already being threatened by the next Valentine, that is February. Because nobody will send you a card. And I, I confirm it in Jesus' name. You are going to go bullets this Valentine if you are single. 
It's not a cause. You are going to be bullless so that your trust will not be in bull. Some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. Your trust must be in Jesus' name. Then the person God wants for you will come in March after you have endured Valentine. <laughs> ah, somebody just hated me. She's here, bullless. Valentine is coming. Valentine is coming. Thank God this one has before they say I curse her. You have somebody already, you raise your hand, so you get. But the lady is getting tired. Guess what? While she's getting tired, God is busy working. All this transaction was going on here. And she's here wondering, God, 2023 is about to end. Nobody's even toasting me. Nobody's asking me. Nobody's talking to me. I don't understand. After all this, my years of faithfulness, that the GEO said I should do 40 days fast. May I do 50 days? I don't understand this kind of nonsense. I go, I go, I go, I go, I go, I go. And God is just wondering, what kind of mumu behavior is this? I left you here to go and fix things. You're here quarreling me. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> God comes back here. God is busy here. God is focused here. Because here's the deal. God is instructing. God is guiding. God is teaching. What is he doing? God is making. I will make for him. She's such a prized jewel that God wanted him to reject every other species there is. That's why when you are dating somebody and you are the main chick, both of you are the wrong chick. Because if somebody's got to have a main, even if you are not the others, you are in a wasted place. Because the one that should choose you should not choose you as one of a community. And I'll show you from scripture. If you got that scripture in the New Living Translation, please change to read. There's a word I'm looking for there. All right, let's go back to Genesis 2. If you have NLT, New Living Translation, there's a word I'm looking for there. So she's still here, but God is walking. He's walking. God will make a way. God is walking now. Is that the song? One thing I know. One thing is sure. I'm wondering the song. God is walking. Okay. But you understand, is that I'm making a way of working it out? That's what I'm trying to say. Watch this. He gave names to all livestock, all birds of the sky, and all the wild animals. Didn't dead wild animals, but still there was no help just right for him. In essence, I'll remain single until the picture comes. Next verse. Now watch this. 21. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. So the Lord God formed. No. 21. Oh. So the Lord God caused the man to fall in a deep sleep. This is the best place to choose from. A sleeping position. What's the sleeping position? The place of total peace. Not a place of anxiety. Not a place of everybody, you know, God, they are pressuring me. What do I do? Watch this. But there are two key words there that you must look at. The Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. Who caused the sleep? Who caused the sleep? For some of you right now, God is causing sleep. You know how? He's speaking to your heart. Be calm. I got you. I'm figuring it out. You stay relaxed. Watch this. While the man slept, who did the sleeping? Who did the sleeping? Who did the sleeping? How many of you have ever, because you have seen a movie... You were really sleepy, but you stayed up to see the movie. You drank coffee, you drank hot tea, you drank something, just... Psh, how many of you? Sleep came, you refused. You see these things I'm telling you about? If you want to marry through anxiety, pressure, if you want to make stupid decisions, God can't stop you. All he does is he supplies the sleep rest. But you choose the sleep. While the man slept, watch this. The Lord God took... Hey! And he thought she was stranded. The Lord God took one of the man's ribs and closed the opening. Next verse. What's this? Why didn't I tell you to lie down? Anytime I do this illustration, I have to make them lie down. No, no, don't worry. Don't worry. Just stay. Next verse. 
Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. Watch this. You know, when we teach this like this, people start telling us God doesn't give people wives. The last wife he gave was Adam. After Adam, he said, he that finds a wife, please calm down. Our decisions as children of God is not independent of God. Our decision as children of God is guided by God. So don't tell me that's not God no longer. See, God has an opinion on every matter, including who you marry. He has an opinion. If you don't seek his opinion, he'll let you do your thing and face it. If you seek his opinion, he will tell you what his thoughts are. Come, let's reason together. Watch this. Stay with me on the scripture. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her. For me to bring her to him, who is the first person she saw? Me or him? You know what's going on? I know the problem. Face me, darling. You know the problem today? People are trying to see him without seeing him. That's the problem. You know, some of you are afraid to let God know about your relationship. Because you know that the human being you are carrying is even taking you away from the same God that is trying to protect you. Whereas, as she opened her eyes, the first thing she saw in all of creation was he saw a being in front of him, God. And God said, come. She didn't go to him by lowering her blouses so that her boobs can show, lifting her skirts so that her willy willy legs will show. You know, it's in this Abuja now. They also call it bomb shot. It's no, it's no longer bomb shot, it's waist shot. It's here, so it's not here again. You just see, ah, we're going somewhere. I just looked at my wife and said, ah! Men are going through. <laughs> what our eyes they see for this Abuja? Hmm. Let me ask you, who brought your man to you? I didn't say she should answer. Snapchat. Then God said, Come. Hey! The first person she saw, the next person she sees, who does the introduction? You know, some people, eh, because they want to marry, they are going for every birthday party, going to every occasion so the husband can meet them. His ways are not your way, his thoughts are not your thoughts. Next verse, let's close this transaction. I thank them for the added time, it really helped. Watch what the man says at last. In essence, I've been looking for something. When the right man comes into your life, and men listen to this too, even married men listen to this, because this is why marriages are failing. In God's order, he's a speaking being. He defines by speech. Some of you are just forcing him to date you. No, no. The right man will speak you into his life. And don't enter relationship by default. We just got close. What nonsense is that? That's the way we can just get away. Courtship does not begin until there's a direct commitment. Open your mouth. Even shy people know how to open mouth. I'm not, and I'm not talking that nonsense proposal of this generation where people are dating, sleeping in the same house, then they go and arrange one restaurant. Stuff like that like this. <laughs> if you have been sleeping with me, you bring ring, I'll say, put it. What have you been waiting for? Put it. Put it. Put it, my friend, I'll be waiting. <laughs> you, think, you think I came here to joke? Put, put the thing inside. You see people, they arrange all the paparazzi. Somebody has been dating for 50 years. You put all the paparazzi, put everything. You wear and go. Then the person now brings me, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. If I did, I'll slap my, my friend will stop that nonsense. Put, put, put in pressure on the sons of men to, to go and back. Go. One, if they ever bring me back here, I'll tell you my story. Nonsense. You, you put things about ring. This is about the fifth ring I'm wearing in my 30 years. We started when I, I kept them. I'll show my children for a memorial the things we call ring. Do you know Malam? <laughs> but guess what? 
She's right there right now because she was spoken into a place. A man is not talking right. They're just patching him. He's abusing you left, right, center. Say, I don't know what to do. I'm so into him. Come out of him. I'm so into him. Mumu talk. I, I was you. you. Your brain will not return. This one, I'm just wozing, wozing here. They think I used to beat woman. I don't used to beat anybody. But it's Mumu I used to beat with my mouth. At last! In essence, I've been waiting. Not, uh, let's see how it goes. Wow. The day a man tells you that nonsense, say, oh boy, be going. Let's see how it goes. What's the answer? Be going. Be gone. Who said that thing? Who said that thing? Who said that? You have sense. You have sense. You have sense. You have sense. Clap for her. Clap for her. She has sense. Be gone. The Bible says if a man finds a treasure, he goes back. He sells everything he has. He doesn't come to the landowner and say, can I buy the treasure? He buys the whole land. Because when he gets the land, the treasure is part of the land. Then somebody's coming to your life, you know, I don't really know. See, let me tell you this. Sisters, watch this. If a man comes to your life undecided, expel him. The person who should take time to consider a proposal is her. Before you approach me, oh boy, do your prayer. Don't come and tell me, let's pray about it. You're a man. See what you have to see before you come to me. Don't come and confuse me. Then I'll start praying about it. Then later you say you're not doing Scripture. <laughs> that person talking, I will just give you marriage now. <laughs> scripture, scripture. These media people, at last, with exclamation, with joy, watch what he says. Because we have a lot of humoristic people right now using the Bible to oppress women. Yes, he's the leader. Yes, he's the boss. Yes, he's, he's, he's the head of the home. But he did not say, you know, welcome. You're my house help. No, it's helper, not house help. See what I'm saying? Yes, I'm touching your head, sir. Sorry. You get what I'm saying? Look at what it says. This one, not this two, is bone of my, from my bone. In essence, I'm going to preach a gospel that you're one with me. I'm going to hold you where I hold myself. I'm going to place you as important as I place me. What's this? Flesh of my flesh? Wow. Adam was saying we are one stock. There's no difference between you and I. I'm the leader here, I know, but you know what? I can never look down on you. I can never put you below. I can never undermine who you are. Because let me say something to you. There's nothing I am that you are not. Hi. And somebody's giving you low self-esteem, you're still hanging on. Run. You don't need to see a counselor or break the relationship. The relationship is useless. He must speak live. Live. Now I send my wife to teach. And I'm sending her a reminder. Reminder. That's the woman I married. I didn't want to see the mic. If she does five minutes, I'll give you a microphone. But I have a role to speak live out of her. To show her who she is. I know the first time when I began to say to her, I teach her an intercessor. And she looked at me like, I don't know what you're talking about. I say, yeah, that's it. I'm not putting something on you. I'm seeing something in you. Because she, she was taken from the man. Did you see this? So at this point, it's not nonsense, nonsense. You know, actually, uh, I can't sleep without you. I can't eat without you. <laughs> Sweet nonsense. What strength is this speaking out of you? Where is this shaping you? And like I said, when we began... Thank you guys. Clap for them. God bless you. And like I said when it started, you know where all of this is leading to? It's leading somewhere. That we stand together fulfilling his will. And if any relationship you want to come into is not promising the fulfillment of God's mandate on your respective lives, that's just a wasted relationship. And to the married here, Go and judge your marriage based on how far it is fulfilling the mandate of God on your lives. Everybody in this room will soon die. I know you have been prophesied to in church. I didn't come to speak up against that prophecy. When I say soon, in the context of eternity, what's a hundred years? If Jesus tarries. Even this night, Jesus can just show up. End of story. How purposeful is what we're doing? 
Final word I'll give you before I uh, switch and they come and sort out for questions to be answered. As a single, sit on the judgment seat. Judge sternly what you are coming into. Because as a married person, you'll be situated on the mercy seat. You'll be having mercy whether you like it or not. So you better judge carefully what you'll be merciful to for the rest of your life. Because the person you choose is the experience you select. Hmm? God bless you. Auntie. Can we celebrate our pastor once again? God bless you, sir. TLC Youth appreciates you.